Good morning, New Covenant. Excited to sing with you again this morning and tell you about some more missionaries. I don't know if any of y'all had a chance to listen to the missions conference that Mission to the World put on this past weekend. We were able to listen to one night in our family, and I hope if you did that it blessed you. And we need to keep remembering to pray for our missionaries. So let's get started today with singing. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Remember, we're going to sing the first four verses, and then the congregation will join us on the last two. But let's just practice. Here we go. Oh, ready? One, two. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Tasha Krizan. We saw them with their little kids, with their little babies. So just remember, so I just remember when I was a kid that thinking that missionaries had to be like really, really different kinds of people. Um, and in some ways they do make decisions that are different from most people, but really they're more like regular people than, than not. Um, and God calls regular people who do things like get married and who have to bury people and who have babies and have to feed their family and all the regular things we do. Um, he calls regular people to be missionaries and he equips them and meets their needs. And one of the ways he meets their needs is by having churches like New Covenant um, pray for them and provide money for them. And so on Mission Sunday, on March 14th, when we sing this song to the congregation, we're going to be um, making pledges on how we can our church can financially support these missionaries. So I encourage you to talk with your family about maybe what your family can commit to to provide financially for these missionaries. Anyway, let's get back to Ursula and Stan in Vienna, Austria. Um, does anyone else remember? Anyone remember who else we learned about who lives in Vienna, Austria? Frank, do you remember? I know that it's a girl. I don't. Know we what heard it was a woman. Yes, I that's a good trip. I mean, it's Josephine. Yes. Ryan's mom was a missionary yeah. at those pictures that we saw with that concert. That was when she was a missionary in Russia. Yeah. We heard from Cindy Morgan, who was a missionary in Austria with her husband, Dennis. And she spoke those really, those really different sounding words. Do you remember? And we couldn't understand what she said. What language was that, Trip? 
Russian. It wasn't Russian. Or, wait, which one? It I, was German. She spoke to us in German, wait, and she was talking German. about how she has she helps people practice English, right? And that she learned German and they learned English. Um, anyway, Ursula and Stan have to speak that same language over in Austria. They had to learn German too. Um, and so that's just the cool connection that those two missionaries are both in the same spot helping people. I want to read you a statement that Ursula wrote about her work in Austria and how God is with her. Here's what she, what she wrote. We're both working with trafficked women here in Vienna. We are able to reach out in practical ways to communicate the gospel. We invite the ladies for dinner. Sometimes we play games with them and watch movies with them. We discuss and pray for their personal concerns and anxieties. Many are here against their will, but they don't belong in any country. They don't have passports, nor do they have the right to work. We have a wonderful Chinese woman living with us who is not sure that she can stay in Austria. We pray and study God's word with her. I hope this gives you a good picture of how we communicate the gospel. Well, so that's what she wrote. And then I said, Miss Ursula, do you have any pictures you can send me? And you know what she wrote back? What? She actually wrote back, I cannot send pictures of our women as it is private. Why? And that means it would be dangerous for us to know which women she's working with. Because being trafficked means that they have been captured from one country and brought to another country. And y'all, so th these are some of the most defenseless, hurting people in the world. And Ursula and Stan are there helping them and having them in their home and teaching them about Jesus when the rest of the world doesn't even want them there. Their own countries, they can't go to their own country. They can't, they're having to struggle to stay in Austria. So we need to really pray for them and we need to thank the Lord for Ursula and the work that she's doing. And I'm thankful that she did send a picture that didn't have those women in it. It was a beautiful picture of her wedding. So thank you for sending that. Now we're going to learn about a local organization called Union Mission. It has lots of people that work for them. So it's, 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 it's a big organization. Um, but it's what kind of like being a missionary here in America is like. We're going to hear from a woman named Rachel Hall. And she's going to tell us what, what she does at, at Union Mission. So watch this video. Hello, my name is Rachel Hall and I'm the administrator here at the Union Mission Women and Children's Shelter. Here at the Union Mission, every day we shelter women and children who are experiencing homelessness. And when you think about what has to happen in someone's life for them to experience homelessness, it's not just that they lost their job and that they lost their place to stay, but they had nowhere else to turn, no friends or family who could take them in and help them. And so here at the Union Mission, we're able to do that. We're able to, when a woman and children has nowhere else to go, they're able to come in and get food and shelter and clothing. And most importantly, they're able to have a home. And while they're here with us, we're able to share with them that not only do they have a home here on earth, but they have a home in heaven provided by Jesus Christ in his life, death, and resurrection. And we do that through a couple of different things. We teach Bible study here every night at the Union Mission. In 2020, which was a difficult year for so many of us, we taught almost 4,000 hours of Bible study to women and children here in the shelter. Doesn't matter if you're 98 years old or if you're one years old, you're gonna to go to Bible study and you're gonna hear on your level who Jesus is and what he did so that you can have a relationship with him and a home in heaven. Yesterday I was teaching a Bible study to our women and children and I had them building a puzzle, but I had hidden pieces of the puzzle around the room. So when they got down to the end, they didn't have the, what they needed to finish their puzzles. So they were running around looking for the piece. When the little girl found the piece to finish her puzzle, she was jumping up and down and saying, I found it, I found it. And after she finished her puzzle, we were able to share with her from the Gospel of Matthew, the story of the lost coin and of the lost sheep and how Jesus searches for us and is so excited when we repent. It's so important for us in this day and age when Christianity is associated with so many different kinds of things in our country. For the women and children who stay with us, who might never meet another Christian, to know who we are because they're going to associate Christianity with the Union Mission. 
I was talking with a woman who used to stay in the shelter, and we were sharing our testimonies of how we had come to know the Lord. And she shared with me that when she was staying in the shelter with her son, after Bible study one night, her son came to her and said, Mom, what do I really have to do to be a Christian? And she looked down at her son, and she realized she didn't have an answer to his question. But she knew where they could get one. And so she told me that she decided right then and there to take her son down to the office and to talk to the staff member who was on duty. And so they went down there, and they asked the staff member, what do we really have to do to be saved? And she said, I'll never forget, the staff member opened her Bible and she took me to Romans. And she said, all you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you will be saved. And my son and I did that that day. And we know for sure that we have a relationship with Jesus because we stayed at the Union Mission. Y'all, Union Mission is just a few miles from here. And so when we pass out the bags of food that you can get in the lobby at the church, there are little cards in there. Whenever you pass those bags out, that person that you get that opens the bag and eats the food is going to get a card that says you can go to Union Mission and find a warm bed and food and you can be told about Jesus. So make sure you always have one of those bags from the church lobby in your car. Um, and one of the things I love that Rachel told us about Union Mission is how clearly she illustrates how missionaries work. They do two main things. They meet real and practical needs of people and they share the gospel. So these women that Rachel Hall talked about they need a place to stay, and they need a warm kitchen like we saw in that video, and they need to hear the gospel. They need to hear messages like that little girl when she learned that she found that last puzzle piece, and that's how Jesus looks for us and pursues us, just like she looked for that puzzle piece. All right. I hope that gives you some insight into two more of our missionaries. We'll end our, um, end our lesson now. Keep practicing your song. I know you all know it. You just got to keep repeating and repeating it, and we'll be singing in just a few weeks. Have a great day.